Coming up on Evening Edition, multiple mayoral races took place last night. We'll have the results. Plus, a new event showcases the talents of SIU students. And a new medical breakthrough prepares to take flight. Live from Southern Illinois University, you're watching River Region Evening Edition. Voters elected Carbondale Mayor Mike Henry for a second term last night. Good evening, I'm Hannah Frisch. And I'm Jacob Gordon. According to the Jackson County Courthouse, Henry won against opponent Nathan Colombo by 214 votes, or roughly 10% of the vote. Incumbents Adam Laus and Thomas Grant were re-elected another term on the Carbondale City Council, along with newcomer Lee Fronenberger. The city of Marion in Southern Illinois has a newly elected mayor for the first time in decades. The previous mayor, Bob Butler, began his term office in 1963 and retired last year. Last night, businessman Mike Absher beat out three others to win the election and is promising multiple economic development projects. Butler is thought to be the longest serving mayor in, U in Illinois history and it remains to be seen whether Absher will try to challenge Butler's many years in office. Well, Jacob, it was so sunny outside today. The weather was amazing. It was a beautiful day to get out and enjoy it for sure. Madeline Parker is here now with the first look at weather. She's actually outside for us tonight. Madeline, how are things looking out there? It was pretty sunny out today, but the clouds are. Well, Jacob and Hannah, it was pretty sunny out today, but the clouds are starting to roll in and they'll be continuing to roll in later into tonight because tonight's going to be cloudy skies with 56 degrees. Tomorrow morning's going to be dropping down about 50 degrees, still with some cloudy skies, and tomorrow afternoon will be about 56 degrees again, but we'll be seeing some rain. Later on in my forecast, we'll be talking about how we have some more rainy days ahead and we might be seeing some warmer temperatures, but I'll tell you more about that in my five-day forecast. All right, Madeline, thanks. SIU fraternities and sororities came together today to help organize a blood drive on SIU's campus. Blood, which is we all have an abundance of, is actually a valuable commodity. The Red Cross says approximately 36,000 units of red blood cells are needed every day in hospitals across the U.S., with some needing blood every two seconds. If you missed your chance to donate today and would like to know when the next blood drive is near you, you can find that information out on redcrossblood.org. Many Carbondale locals have a faster way to get treatment now thanks to a new form of transportation. Evening Edition's Patrick Cotto has more on the medical advancement coming to the area. The Carbondale Fire Department brought in firefighters and ambulance workers to practice safety landing. The helicopter is part of a brand new tradition in Jackson County and the fire department thinks it's a huge addition. And so the ability for us to be able to get the helicopter in, land it safely, load it and get it back out with the quickest amount of time and be seamless for the patient is the most important to us. The department had a landing zone class for the workers to know about the safety of landing a helicopter. But this training event isn't just happening in Carbondale. We go all over the place and, and do these classes for other fire departments and ambulance services. And with us moving here in the middle of February and opening that new base, um, I got a feeling we're going to be used a lot more. So it's nice to have that training fresh in their minds. The addition of the helicopter means more emergency transportation chances for the ones hurt. It would depend on uh, what extent of injuries. Um, so we'll receive training in trauma patients and we will determine whether uh, they're a category one or a category two. The Carbondale Hospital hopes to receive a level two trauma center designation, but will have to get approved by the state. They're hoping the formal designation will come in the fall. Now the training will continue until the Carbondale Hospital receives its certification. The SIU alums in April event kicked off yesterday with special guest speaker Tom Desch. Desch is the founder and producer of House Painter Media Production Company that strives to tell engaging true stories through motion pictures. He wanted to take this opportunity to share his experiences with current SIU students and prepare them for their future careers in the film industry. It's great to connect with people who are where you were many years ago and you know, anything you can do to help share the lessons you've learned. You know, I've had some tough lessons, some easy lessons, but anything that I can share and make their life in the film and video world a little easier is fantastic. Now about the types of experiences they will have in the future. Great experience for uh, SIU filmmakers like me uh, to learn about the different types of documentary filmmaking and where it can really take us after we graduate and all that we can do in this field. 
The alums and April events will continue on April 11th with Brittany Hardaway, a multimedia jour journalist with WICS in Springfield and a graduate of the Radio, Television, and Digital Media program. Well, Friday kicked off the start of the SIU Theater Department's Big Money New Play Festival. It's a chance for both undergraduate and graduate playwright students to present full-length plays and stage readings all weekend long. The event takes place at Mo Laboratory Theater and consists of five different shows. Director Maya Gray, or excuse me, Maya Gary, and president of the New Play Lab RSO, Tori Estes, shares their thoughts on the event. I think that festival is a really unique um, experience for viewers because um, you're seeing a little bit more raw material, you're seeing something that's in progress, and so I think it's, it's a little bit more fun, you're getting to um, really experience what the process is like in terms of the, the production side of things. So. And just the idea of the festival, of this department coming together to support the art of playwriting is just really, really phenomenal. All admission to the weekend long event is free and it's open to the public. Ahead on evening edition, the new Chicago mayor is making history. Plus, how potential southern border sanctions could affect the U.S. You're watching Evening Edition at 5. Welcome back to Evening Edition. The new mayor of Chicago has officially made history. Lori Lightfoot will be the Windy City's first African-American woman and the first openly gay woman to serve as mayor. The 56-year-old attorney ran on a platform centered on eliminating corruption in City Hall and has vowed to help Chicago's low-income people. I think the most historic thing was beating the old entrenched Chicago machine and getting such a resounding mandate for change. Um, that gives me incredible joy and makes me feel very humble. Lightfoot won the nearly 73% of the votes over Tony Preckwinkle and will take office this May. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Springfield Cape Girardeau has reportedly spent more than $700,000 settling a claims of clergy against overabuse in the last 30 years. The Southeast Missouri reports Bishop Edward Rice disclosed in a letter yesterday that the Southern Missouri Diocese has spent more than $517,000 paying alleged victims and nearly $190,000 on legal fees since 1986. The diocese has also listed on its website the names of 16 priests deemed to have accusations of child abuse. Rice says the diocese's efforts to address the sexual abuse are ongoing. And the Indiana University mumps outbreak grows to six student cases. An Indiana University spokesman, Chuck Carney, says three more mumps cases were confirmed late last week. Carney says five of the six students diagnosed with the infection live off campus. The university and health officials are offering free vaccinations to anyone who came in close contact with those with the illness. Indiana University previously had five mumps cases in early 2016. A doctor is suing the San Diego hospital that he once was employed at. Dr. Patrick Sullivan alleges he discovered secret cameras in all three of the operation rooms at the Sharp Grossmont Hospital's Women's Center. Administrators told him that the cameras were used to catch people stealing painkillers from drug carts. The hospitals had the cameras installed and operated from 2012 to 2013, but admits that patients were sometimes recorded. At least 86 female patients are taking the hospital to court over the cameras. And the Food and Drug Administration says it's investigating reports of people suffering seizures after using e-cigarettes. The FDA issued a public notice today saying it's identified 35 such cases of seizures after vaping between 2010 and early this year. Most of the seizures involve young people and the FDA says seizures are a known possible side effect of nicotine poisoning, but emphasized that it has not determined a definite link between seizures and vaping. The agency notes that there is no clear pattern to the seizures. And the FDA is also looking into the public opinion about the growing trend of products containing cannabis oil and active agreement and marijuana. The agency announced yesterday that it's holding a public hearing next month on CBD products. It is marketed for everything from helping to relieve pain to reducing stress and anxiety, but the agreement ingredient is not sanctioned by the FDA. Federal officials want to discuss developing a regulatory framework for the use of CBD in products. The public hearing is scheduled for May 31st. 
President Trump is praising Mexico for apprehending migrants at the Mexican southern border. But the White House wants, more, wants a more long-term commitment from the Mexican government and from Congress. The surge of migrants seeking asylum at the border is overwhelming immigration authorities and forcing them to speed up the process. I'm awfully proud of the work that men and women are doing down here. Uh, very vigilant in what they're doing and very dedicated to the mission. But this is tough. Which is why President Trump is threatening to close the border if Congress doesn't find a solution. Critics say closing those ports would have a negative impact on the economy and could dry out the supply of car parts, beer, and produce like avocados. The parents involved in the largest college admissions scandal in the history, including actresses Lori Loughman and Felicity Huffman, appeared in court today. Evening Edition's Kyler Giebert has more. Lori, 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 pay for my tuition, Lori! It's lights, camera, plea in a Boston courtroom today as actresses Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman face a judge in the largest college admissions scandal in history. Laughlin and her husband accused of paying $500,000 in bribes to get their two daughters into the University of Southern California, while Huffman is charged with disguising $15,000 as a charitable donation that went to altering her daughter's SAT scores. Last month, prosecutors arrested 50 people in the scheme, dubbed Operation Varsity Blues orchestrated by William Rick Singer, the CEO of a college prep company. The scheme allegedly worked one of two ways, through cheating on standardized testing or through athletics, bribing coaches to falsely classify the applicant as a recruited athlete. Between roughly 2011 and 2018, wealthy parents paid Singer about $25 million in total to guarantee their children's admission to elite schools. Singer is cooperating with authorities. Meanwhile, many universities have fired those coaches involved. Others say they are reviewing the admitted students connected to the scandal. For Evening Edition, I'm Kyler Giebert. Huffman and Lofman were not asked to enter a plea and reportedly spoke very little. Singer entered a guilty plea. And the government is reportedly warning Hollywood about changing the rules for the Academy Awards. According to a report in, the, in Variety, the Justice Department sent a letter to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences about pen, potential rules that could exclude films made by streaming services, stating that the new rules would raise antitrust issues and potentially break federal competition law. The letter comes after filmmaker Steven Spielberg planned to endorse a rule that changes that would limit films by streaming services from being considered for Oscars. Netflix says streaming gives filmmakers more ways to share their art. And if you're a Marvel fan, you may have trouble getting tickets for their next film. Tickets for Avengers Endgame went on sale yesterday morning, and many top ticketing sites crashed due to demand. AMC, Fandango, and Adam all reported site crashes when tickets went on sale. The film has already broken early sales records, with Fandango reporting that Avengers Endgame has the highest first day pre-sale gross of any film ever, doing so in just six hours. Avengers Endgame comes out on April 26th. I know you're a big fan. Did you get your tickets? They, yep, they're already bought middle, right in the middle of the theater. We're doing good. Awesome. All right. And it was a beautiful day across the river region, but how long is the sunshine going to stick around? Madeline has to check your forecast next. But first on Wall Street stocks, end of the day with positive results. The Nightly Business Report has more coming up next at 5.30. Welcome back to River Region Evening Edition. Here is a viewer photo sent in by Dan Siska overlooking Thompson Lake. If you have a viewer photo you would like to send in, please send it to our Facebook or Twitter at River Region News. As you can see, it was bright and sunny, but it is currently partly cloudy. It is 68 degrees right now with a dew point of 44 degrees. Humidity is at 42%. We have an 8 mile per hour wind from the southeast, and our barometer reads 30.23. For our almanac today, we have an average temperature of 64 degrees, and our high today was 66. So we have a 2 degree temperature difference there, but for our average low, it was 40 degrees, so an 8 temperature degree difference there, with our low being 48 degrees today. We did not reach our record high of 89 degrees in 2012, nor our record low. For our regional temperatures, Carbondale and Marion are at 68 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Waterloo is also partly cloudy skies with 67 degrees. Cape Girardeau and Paducah and Evansville are all bright and sunny with 65 degrees, 69 degrees, and 68 degrees respectively. For our national temperatures, we can see that it was starting to cool off. It's been pretty warm. We have some green over here, which is 
in the 50 to 60 degree temperatures and we're going into the 70s over in the river region which is starting to warm up but we might be seeing a bit warmer temperatures later on in the week. For our surface map we can see that we have a high pressure system over here in central Illinois which is going to be bringing in some higher with clear skies but for right now there is some rain and we have some thunderstorms over in St. Louis coming into the river region which we'll be seeing later on in the week. For tonight, however, we'll be have some cloudy skies with 49 degrees for the low. We have an 8 mile per hour wind from the southeast and the sun is setting at 721 p.m. Now for the bus stop forecast, it's going to be 51 degrees tomorrow morning with cloudy skies and a 6 mile per hour wind from the southeast. Now tomorrow is going to be cloudy skies in the morning, but tomorrow afternoon we're going to start seeing some rain and 57 degrees for the high. We're going to have a 12 mile per hour wind from the southeast, so it's going to be pretty windy and pretty rainy. So make sure you have a rain jacket and make sure you have your umbrella handy. But tomorrow night it's going to have rain early on, but it's going to be foggy later on in the evening so watch out when you're driving and we have 51 degrees for the low nine, pi, nine mile per hour wind from the southeast so the winds will actually be calming down later on in the night for our five-day outlook we can see that's gonna be raining on Thursday with 58 degrees for the high Friday will be warming up to 67 degrees and Saturday 72 degrees for the high cloudy skies so not a lot of Sun and on Sunday we'll have some scattered thunderstorms throughout the day with 71 degrees for the high and on Monday cloudy in the morning but then sunny in the afternoon so we'll have a 69 degree temperature for the high and while we won't be seeing a lot of sunny temp sunny skies, we'll be having some warmer weather. So that's something to look forward to. Exactly. And even though we'll start to see that sun probably, would you say, Monday? Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll get to see, get out and enjoy it for sure. And you know what they say, April showers bring some May flowers. So hopefully we'll be seeing some better weather. Hopefully. hopefully. All right. Thanks, Madeline. And now here's Tyler Zabu with a preview of what's coming up next in sports. Tyler. Thank you, Hannah. Well, softball rolled yesterday and plays today and the latest in the Robert Kraft case. This is Evening Edition on WSIU. week after earning her first D1 win, softball's Holly Marusik followed it up in a big way. The sophomore transfer dominated the Murray State Racers, allowing only three hits and no runs, and two of those hits were in the first inning. The outing was also her first career complete game. And the bats came alive in the second inning, starting with back-to-back -back homers by Caitlin Massa and Megan Brown. And the dogs would take the rematch with the Racers 4-0. And now Saluka softball hits the road, taking on the Billikens in St. Louis. First pitch was a little over an hour ago, and the score is 3-0 SIU in the bottom of the fifth. And there has been a little change to softball's upcoming schedule. Sunday's game with Evansville has been moved up to Friday at 7 p.m., with Saturday's doubleheader double to follow as originally scheduled. And baseball secured its own big win last night, topping Arkansas State in Jonesboro. Mason Heiser pitched into the seventh inning to collect his third win of the season, and Trey McDaniels posted save number eight. Arkansas State was ranked 29th coming into the contest, and the first of a gauntlet stretch for the Salukis, who will see 15 top 50 teams nationally. Next up for SIU, the reigning conference champion Missouri State to open MVC play. And Saluki track and field earned another track athlete of the week honor. The recipient, Brianna Branch, the first time she's won the award. Branch set two personal bests last weekend at the Texas Relays and won the 200-meter dash in a field of 87 athletes. Saluki track is off until April 11th when they take part in the Tennessee Relays. And a California junior hockey team is in trouble after a video appeared to show players making anti-Semitic comments and one player performing a Nazi salute. Fifteen players and three coaches have been suspended, but one local rabbi responded to the video by inviting the players and coaches to meet up and talk to a, a Holocaust survivor. Survivor, talk to them for a few minutes. See how quickly it will take you to change your mind and never do that again. News concerning Robert Kraft, the owner's lawyers filed a motion Tuesday to suppress a video that shows alleged sexual activity inside a massage parlor. The Patriots owner currently faces two misdemeanor counts of soliciting prostitution in Florida. The motion, though, has been countered by several media outlets who have filed motions to intervene. The next hearing for Kraft is scheduled for April 12th. And is the fastest man in the world faster than a machine? Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt challenged a moto taxi in Lima, Peru as part of Bolt's promotional campaign. And the results? Well, just take a look for yourself.
Well, that is man one, machine zero. I think, you know, I think we should bring back the, uh, what was his name? Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt. We think we should bring that back. All right, thanks, Tyler. <laughs> When are we going to meet the umbrellas? Madeline has a final check of your forecast next. But first, as we head to break, be sure to follow us on social media at River Region News and check out our website for more local content. We'll be right back. Finally, tonight, one Indiana school district is taking extra steps to make sure students have enough to eat. The pilot food program is happening at Woodland Elementary and students usually get breakfast and lunch at school. But on the weekends at home, they may be without food. So the school rescues the uneaten food from school lunches and turns it into take home meals. Right now, 20 students get eight meals each every weekend and the school hopes to expand the program soon. And we have a correction from earlier in the show. We stated that SIU City Council member Lee Fonabaker is a newcomer. Bonebaker is actually a returning member of the Carbondale City Council. He previously served for six years. All right, taking a look at the weather for the next couple of days. We did see some sunshine today, but we're going to see the rain start to move back into the area. Yeah, we're actually going to be seeing the rain as early as tomorrow. It's going to be a high of 58 degrees, but we are going to be seeing some rain. Friday and Saturday, we're going to see some clouds with a high of 67 degrees and 72 degrees, respectively. But on Sunday, we're going to see some scattered thunderstorms all throughout the day. High of 71, but we're not going to be really able to enjoy that weather because of all that precipitation we're going to be coming in. But luckily, on Monday, we're going to be seeing some sun in the afternoon, so maybe we can enjoy it then. I'll still get out and enjoy it for sure this weekend because we're talking in the 70s, so I am pretty excited about that. All right. All right. Thanks, Madeline. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Nightly Business Report is next. I'm Hannah Frisch. And I'm Jacob Gordon for Madeline Parker, Tyler Zabi, and all the students who work here on Evening Edition. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.